Hey, this is the Surface Geeks Podcast, episode number 29, recorded on Wednesday, June the 12th. It's just everything. Hey, welcome back to the Surface Geeks Podcast. I am your host, David McKay. When I say it's just everything, I've got everything imaginable in the show title. I've, I've thrown out all kinds of keywords in which to get links and clicks. And no, I'm, I'm just, it's what we're going to be talking about. It's WWDC. It's the Xbox One. We got PS4. We also have a little bit of Windows Phone. Got some new cases. We've got a whole lot of forums to talk to you about. We've got some mini tablets. And we got the best co hosts in the nation. Mr. Darren Cohen, how are you doing, sir? Good, Dave. Another fun week of news. And uh, we got new keyboard functions. You forgot the keyboard functions. We got an RT update. I could go on and on and on, just hitting these little things while the intro music plays. I can almost hear it now. My uh, stolen music from Microsoft. Thank you very much, Microsoft, for not uh, contacting me to stop that. But also, we have Mr. Richard Hay from the WindowsObserver.com. Am I getting that right? WinOBS on Twitter, Rich. That's right. WinOBS on Twitter, WindowsObserver.com on the web. And you're throwing me off, sir. You're talking about zombies on oh, uh, Tuesday. Yeah. You know, you're talking about everything being in the show title. That's why I, I normally do one episode of Observe Tech a week. That's why I jumped out and did one yesterday because there was so much news just from Monday alone. Yeah, it was crazy. We got all these shows going on. So, yeah, we're, we've got a lot to talk to you about tonight. I've got some cases. Uh, I'm going to do a case update. I've got iOS 7. So if you guys want to see a screen, you got you it right it? here. Sitting in front of me, I'll show it to everybody. It'll be on the video podcast. I'm gonna try to get that uploaded. Uh, the the thing is, is YouTube, the Google doesn't record all the screens that we can do behind the scenes when we do a when we do a live show. Do a live show, you get a lot of screen cuts and you get to see more things. You'll be able to see um, this iOS seven device. So let's get some things out of the way. Um, follow the show, Surface Geeks, uh, on Twitter. Follow Darren Cohen. He is Fins Up DNC. Follow Mr. Richard Hay. He is Win O B S. Everything. Uh, I tweet out stuff about the show, and I tweet out crazy stuff every once in a while. You follow Richard, you're gonna you're gonna stay up on the news. Richard is like the only person you need to follow, and then to get your news. But you follow Darren if you want to laugh <laughs> and hear. <laughs> Hear things about the Mets every once in a while. It is baseball season. It's a painful, painful experience being a Mets fan. <laughs> I have a note in here for uh, for me to put a call out for writers. And what I mean is uh, about in December, I put a call out there. I said, hey, if you want to help the show, let me know. Contact me. I'm open. You know when life took over and it's mid-June and I'm following up on that. So, um there's, I only have uh, a certain amount of like CPU cycles in which I can like, like dedicate to doing some things, but uh, we're, we're certainly interested. If you have a story to tell or you think you could write about technology, uh, we'd love to have you writing for the blog. If you'd like to just give it a whirl, jump out there in the forums. We always need your help there in the forums answering questions or uh, stimulating conversation out there. We always have a good time with that. So the next thing I want to start you with is the uh, case update for the uh, Lumia 928. So I know we don't have, uh, when you buy one of those iPhone devices, you get about 5 million choices for cases all at once. Windows phone device, hey, we're growing into it, right? Um, so I showed you, uh, there's a YouTube out on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Surface Geeks. You can find a little video that we did about two cases. So we compared two cases from stateside. But I also ordered two cases from China. So I got this one in uh, about a week ago. And so these took, this one took about 10 days. The other one took... Uh, a little over two weeks to get. So, it, and actually, that's good for China. Some things can take a month or more. Now, I screwed up, guys. If you look at this, it says Lumia 920. In the title of the eBay, it said Lumia 920, 
and it also had 928 in it. And I did not scrutinize it enough. But this is a squishy gel case for a Lumia 920. I think it's going to be a nice little case if it fits snug. But we won't know until I get somebody trotting through here with a 920. Now, this is going to go to the meetup. This will be a giveaway item. A whole $4 gel case from eBay. I'm, I'm going all out for you guys. Splurging. all out. Okay, but what I really want to show you is this one. This one came from China. This was, I can't remember, three, four, five, six dollars. It's got this little pattern, little X pattern. Almost looks like a singular logo now that I think about it, and that's kind of old school. But you can see that it has the flash and the, um, what, what do we call that? Uh, the lens? No, no, no. What are they calling that uh, that new flash for the 928? Oh, the Xeon. Xenon. Yeah, Xenon. Xenon, right. Xenon, yeah. I haven't been paying attention to the flash bulbs that much. But also the uh, speaker for back here. Now, I was concerned because this looks cool. It looks really cool. I thought, well, there's no way that this is going to fit. Because if you remember, I had this one, which looked cool. But you can see how that just pops on and it it just flops off. This There's no protection whatsoever on this little thing. So this will probably get thrown away. I, I wouldn't even want to give that to someone at the meetup. So I was a little more concerned about this one. Now, this one is a little more rigid. So let's go ahead and put it in the phone. But did you hear that? I don't know if you even heard it. It snapped. Ah, oh, shit. I just dropped my mouth. Excuse my French. <laughs> Not supposed to say that on the air. Beep. <laughs> but I just dropped my 928. Luckily, I had the $6 eBay case <laughs> on this thing. This thing fits well, guys. So I'm going to get you the link to the seller that is selling this case. And um, so wh what was that? That was at about uh, that looks almost seven minutes where I have to go in and <laughs> clear clear my vulgarities. Excuse me. That, that went as well as the race car demo at WWDC. What was... <laughs> I said that went as well as the race car demo at WWDC. I don't know if you saw that. Not. Gear Cam's looking at the fan. I know, Gear Cam is... Uh, <laughs> I knocked it. Well, everything went to the heck in a handbasket as soon as I... Uh, I uh, no, oh, I can't do gear cam anymore. As soon as I knocked, as soon as I dropped my phone. See, that's what I get for trying to uh, cater to this camera up here. It just slipped right out of my hands. Um, if you'll remember, I bought this little plastic one too that goes together, clicks together. Now this is this is a hard plastic. So 928 owners, you have options. They're cheap. They're on eBay. Don't be scared of them. I'll get you the link to this one. Look at this nice, clear little gel. I can finally take off my uh, sticker, a.k.a. case, uh, on the back with my EMI and my serial number, and it, it covers everything really good in there. So really happy with this one. This is my new case. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Did uh, live chat say anything? They're just watching the weather. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. They're just watching the weather. All right, so we got some news. You want to go over news, or do you want to? Anybody want to take a look at? Uh, so maybe we, maybe when we go over WWDC news and we talk about that, I'll show you this other little device. Talk I think why don't we start with the uh, the Microsoft news of the week, which I guess the biggest news I. I think we'd all agree is the Xbox One, the second part of the launch. Absolutely. So it was at E3, which is a gaming convention. Did they talk about gaming? Did, did all the gamers say, whew, thank gosh. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what you expected was that reaction. Yeah, right. So they got a gripe about something, right? Yep. Okay. So did it go well? Who are we asking? I mean, that's I guess that that's the whole definition. Did it okay, go well? Okay, did it go well for gamers? Did Microsoft make a good it, impression? It, on the it gaming went well public? after Microsoft finished their media briefing, and then at about ten thirty that night, it wasn't going so well. 
Okay. Right. That would PS4 coincide when there. PlayStation 4 was announced. When they came out with a cheap And they poked and holes and everything. Oh, they did a great job marketing. They, they marketed right to who was sitting in front of them, people who had lined up since Saturday for the press conference and wanted to hear exactly what they were told. And have since leaked out certain things that made those announcements. Yeah, little tidbits. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> little tidbits. Well, we're leaving DRM up to the publishers. Well, right. thus, so those Microsoft. Right. Uh, anyway. So anyway, so the key, uh, I guess Xbox, the big news, four ninety nine will be the price. That does include Connect. Um, avail? Did they? They didn't give an availability date. No, they Did didn't they? give a specific date. But I thought the one said a November time frame. I saw they right. said November. I have seen specifics for people who have pre-ordered that have been told delivery on twenty one November. Okay. Right before Thanksgiving. Wow. So that's a little earlier than what we heard about for PS4. That's about five weeks early, I guess. Because that's uh, right. Well, PS4 right. just said holidays. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> I saw some January 1st uh, things. Well, on the Amazon product listing, it says 31 December, but I've since been educated in Amazon product listings, and they put the final date in the window the, produ the uh, company gives them for the product. Mm -hmm. oh. So the date you see on Amazon is not an accurate reflection of delivery date. Correct. Okay, and, right. The PS4, their big thing was they w came out and said $399, so already $100 cheaper. Um, but all, play, for those that are not familiar. PlayStation Network always allowed uh, multiplayer gaming. Now, like Xbox, they will be charging uh, $60, I think it's $60 a year, which is That's about right. it's similar Less to Xbox. Less than $5 level. a month is what the slide said. Right. Okay. So they've so, seen the cash cow. They can get in on it. That's fine. Yeah. But they, they forgot they to mention also, that. Um, um, hang on a minute. I just went. We were talking about the multiplayer gaming, but they called out three ninety nine for their console that does not include their PlayStation I uh, camera add on, whereas Connect uh, is coming on the Xbox One. Uh, that's another sixty dollar piece of gear that has to be added to have similar capabilities that the Xbox One does. Right. Out of the so box. We're, we're so we're talking about a forty dollar difference. Yeah. We are forty dollars apart. So did the uh, did the gaming public reaction react towards? one console or the other I mean is is this still you know core gamers a core gamer argument here uh, you know with with all the effort Sony made to point out we're not you know they said we're not doing DRM you can give your used games to anybody you want as many times as you want you know they they said everything exactly what everyone wanted to hear that was opposite of Microsoft who had gone earlier in the day now it's easy to to go second because you already know what your competition's doing. You go in your war room, and I'm sure those you know war rooms are pretty say. busy before that briefing, and they made some tweaks. I guarantee you, I believe Sony made some tweaks to what they were going to announce that night mm -hmm. um, in order to to you know address those kind of things. And like uh, Darren said, since then there's been little tidbits coming out and bits and pieces that they're not so far off of what Microsoft is is doing as well so and of course now we've got some publishers coming out that are saying you know like EA came out today and they said uh, we didn't ask Microsoft for DRM you know so you got that kind of stuff going on as well that one kind of stings I Lots mean some marketing you know sometimes a company will put out one of those things and hope that in the for the good of all of those businesses the other companies will follow along. It's like right. the airlines raising yep. the prices. Yep. Well, you know what? The next week, the, the next guy raises the prices. Exactly. The next guy raises the prices. And Sony said, no, this is our time to uh, pull a little shenanigan. Yeah, they want to reverse what happened to them in the early 2000s with the Xbox 360 being $100 cheaper and their console being much more expensive, the PS3. Right. So it's kind of a flip-flop of the situation. But the reality is, I think, and I agree with Paul Thurot on this, you know, the hardcore gamers and the loyal fans are going to buy the console they want to get no matter what. And that's going to happen this holiday season. And then we'll start seeing the the subsidized, you know, he's talked about a subsidized unit with Xbox Live for two no, years and some other things. You're spot on, or he is yeah. spot on. It, yeah. It's Xboxers versus PlayStation for this holiday season. Then it's game on. Then it, Yeah, then you'll see then all kinds of stuff Whoever makes the right down. move. Whoever yep. has the right title, and sometimes all it takes is that one title. Yeah, and there's some great That's titles just... coming out, but you look, they looked a lot alike to me when I saw the in-game engine demos. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of the hardware is the same, and it is funny you said the early 2000s because then Sony's argument was, hey, ours comes with a Blu-ray player. 
So of right. course, ours is more money. Well, now you have Microsoft saying, here, we want everyone to have Connect. Gamers should build with yep. Connect in mind. And Sony's saying, you know, we'll sell it $100 cheaper without any camera. But will the, will the included hardware... I think it helped Sony at some point. Now I think it's kind of blue, blue, uh, Blu-ray is not a big thing, but yeah. at some point it gave their uh, publishers more ability using that Blu-ray. Will the Xbox developers say, you know what? Every one of those users has Connect, so we can build on that. Whereas yep. PlayStation, we might not make a. No, you can't guarantee a, it, right? Right. You, you can't, can't guarantee, guarantee they're going to have that capability. And the whole DRM thing, EA, they could say what they want. Microsoft is not putting DRM in there by choice. No. They're not going to be like, Microsoft has nothing to gain. They're putting right. DRM in there because they want to attract the publishers. Right. And because Sony's publishers this... want their stuff to be protected and not right. to be sold or given away or cheated or copied or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. So, And Sony then saying, you know, we leave it up to the publishers. I'm like, Microsoft, well, they're both leaving it up to the publishers. If yeah. you don't want to put DRM in your game, it's not going to have DRM. Yep. Uh, and EA's, you know, they've had enough bad flack over the last few years. They're like, <laughs> leave us out of it. Um, but just I don't. It's it is all about marketing because that first half hour after the PlayStation um, uh, demo ended at E3, all you heard about was three ninety nine, and then I know right. Richard, you went on Amazon like, wait, where's the camera? I think it was you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, somebody figured it out and figured yeah. because it's listed on the product listing for the console for the PS4 pre order, mm -hmm. but I later found out that it was not included in because if you go to the Accessory the page. top selling list. It's it, the yesterday it was selling at number twelve with the the PS4 selling in number one for pre-orders. So a lot of people were buying it, but not everybody, like you said. Right. So a lot of it is, and it, we don't know who's going to win. One thing I will say, Microsoft for now pushed a lot more with the TV. Um, Sony did not really talk about an overlay of your TV being an intermediary, a guide. I mean, we know Xbox work of the NFL, but that was what I found most interesting. Sony, they did push a little bit of their, um, the fact they own U Sony Music and Sony Movies and Universal and all that, and they uh, will incorporate that library into the so into the uh, machine, but they didn't talk about it as a second screen or your living room device as much right. as Xbox did, which I found interesting. Either do they not see a value in that, or are, I was wondering if other publishers are less likely to work with them because they are a studio. It's very possible. I mean, you know, and it was interesting with all the flack Microsoft got over talking entertainment during the reveal two weeks ago. Sony spent the first, what, 10 minutes talking about entertainment options on the console and its network at the E3 brief, at the gaming brief. So, um, I don't know. You know, I think the key is going to be you consoles want publishers to come to them exclusive. And you know, some publishers aren't going to be thrilled with some of the options that are out there on either console. Some more restrictive, some more, less restrictive. But that it's all going to be about, like um, Dave said, the game, the, that title that is on that console that really draws people. I, I gave up PC gaming because a publisher stopped publishing my favorite games for the PC. That's why I came to console gaming several years ago, because I could, I could get my titles where I wanted them to. And, and that's exactly what's going to happen here, too. I, I think the hardcore guys are going to buy now. There'll be those holiday buyers, and then there'll be a lot of folks that are, will slowly upgrade as their consoles die off and stuff like that. But hmm. the nice thing is at least most titles are coming out in an Xbox 360 version as well as the Xbox One version. Right, and what I found interesting was the, um, both Xbox and Sony. Sony did a lot of games coming out for PS3, yeah, um, they're still and pushing Xbox over, did too, right? About a hundred titles they said in the next year for 360, and yep. and then you know there was more of that. Is the does the device have to be connected to the internet stuff with the yeah. Xbox One, um, which I really don't understand. Is the if you're not, it's everything's connected now. It's like here's a computer. Yes, it works. Not connected, but does it really work? Right. Um, so Microsoft responded, and uh, we have in the links. Uh, Tom Warren of the Verge got a quote from Microsoft saying, "You know what." If you don't have internet and you're worried about get a 360, we're still coming out with games for that. We're still right. So I think both. It's. I wonder if we're going to see a significant. I could see a last push, price drop on the Xbox 360 and a PS3 in October, November, right before the holidays. I don't know if the three. This I don't think the 360 and the PS4 are this year's holidays machine. I think that's next year. You, you, you mean the, 360 or Xbox One? I mean the Xbox One and the Four. Okay. 
I think really because they're coming out. I mean, the PS4 is right around. Ho- I mean, maybe even right. after the holiday. Xbox One is right before. I could see both companies doing a 199 to 299 price point for their uh, for their older console. consoles. For their older console, pushing all these new games and just trying to get them get them out. Well, uh, we we have differing opinions on what I think about that response Microsoft got gave today. They just told everybody who wants to go to their new console and is worried about being connected to go to an eight year old console. That bugs me a little bit. Fine, well, I, if you don't like it, buy the old one. Right. Yeah, see, I don't like. I mean, that's but, an eight year old. But the only I thought that they came great. out and said. The creepiness factor was okay. This thing's listening for everything, but didn't they come out and say? Yeah, they came out and cleared that up. It's just listening for on. On, yeah, it's listening for the on command. People, you know, they thought it was listening for more. That was gonna. There's a story that came out that said it's gonna watch people's eyes and tell whether they're reading the ads or not, or whatever. Why? Why do we have so much trouble? Is it just the media that blew this out of proportion? Because no, I think their think marketing back, comes out and doesn't get it right. Think back to DirecTV. Think back to Dish Network. TiVo, for God's TiVo, sakes. TiVo, dialed in. single night, calling home. Yeah, that's Even right. Even if you modded it, which I had a first TiVo, TiVo 1. I modded the phone jack because it got blown out by lightning. Threw in the little uh, Ethernet card. It called home yep, every, every single day. night. It's always it still does. On. My TiVo HD does. Yeah, it so dials I, in every. It calls in on the internet every day to update. I don't itself. understand that. So what, my what I was gonna do is sell a little flap, a little connect flap, <laughs> this right here. Right, that you, and you yeah. stick it over it. Like, <laughs> here, watch the video. You there. Watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll be twenty dollars, please. But meanwhile, meanwhile, all the people worried about that are sitting in front of the TV with their iPad in their hand or their Surface right. or whatever other tablet or phone, <laughs> which have two f- cameras sitting on them anyway, yeah. and that are actually connected to the internet. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, even yeah, direct to move also. it along. <clears throat> I, here's where you're going to get me. I'm not a gamer. I am thumb dumb. Left hand yeah. keyboard, right hand mouse. I'll get you on a first person shooter. I'm yeah, good. me too. Um. I just bought a Roku 3 and am enjoying it immensely. I am finally using my Amazon Prime membership in a means in which Amazon intended me to use it for, to consume. And I'm stuck. I'm hooked. My boys love it. They've already watched a bazillion movies. Uh, When the heat of the day comes in the summer, like today, when it got 95 with the heat index up to 105, we were watching Amazon. Give me that. Give me a lot of entertainment choices, but I don't want to buy in to either your point system or some kind of monthly system. Just, just let me have it. Just let me have it. Yeah. I'm I, I absolutely love my Roku too that I won last year at Tech Ed, and we hooked it up to the Wi-Fi, Amazon Prime. It is like you said. It is the way Amazon Prime is meant to be consumed. Exactly. Just awesome stuff. Yeah. And so, I think that's that's one of the negatives of the Xbox. I, I mean, we t- I think last time actually Richard was on the show, we talked about the fact they still. I have to pay a membership to Microsoft to watch yeah. my Netflix, which I pay for on my box. Right. Yeah, when when the other guys, it's free. I mean, right. granted, sometimes the experience is not as good. Probably, uh, right. my TV experience with uh, Amazon is abysmal, but. Everything else is doing is doing good. So, I was who was I having a conversation with recently, and I was talking about some rumors I heard that there were some possibilities. I think it was you, Dave, when we when we talked on the phone. Um, that there's some rumors floating around that Microsoft, in order to kind of you know to get some goodwill back, might take those uh, premium subscription apps like Hulu Plus, Netflix, all of those kind of things that that have that added cost. And pull them out from behind the Xbox Live Gold wall, and put and allow people who subscribe to those things to get them without having to pay the extra subscription. That Did would Rich say that would make me a very happy yes, camper GMI because on the phone. I've got this one back here. You guys see this over here? I've got that old original, and I cannot put it in my living room. It screams like a 747, and I cannot. Which do one it. is that? The old black one or the 360? Oh, it's the 360. It's oh, original. Okay. It's a component. It's not HDMI, so uh, that okay. it's got a fan. Boy, did you howdy, upgrade the uh, the upgrade the interface on that yet? Oh yeah, no. I mean, okay. I updated. It's it's all. No, I mean, 
Yeah, recently, you know, they and they have the new Xbox uh, One interface on there. Oh no, I have not turned this one on. I have, oh, okay. I had very little time to even make a <laughs> chair on time. But I'm like you. I'm not a gamer, so the idea of, and I know that's why Xbox is going for the living room was there. You know, it, and we mentioned Paul Thorat before. He's talked about how small of a market gaming really is, in terms yeah, it's of very TVs. core, very core. Yeah. So they're trying to expand that, but. Why would I, as not a gamer, I mean, once in a while I'll play, you know, I'll play Madden or I'll play NHL, a sports game. I used to play, you know, Duke on the computer, Duke Nukem, I think. But the, um, for, why would I spend $500 for yeah, I was gonna, that Roku box? Chat room is saying, why would I spend $500 and not pay the extra to, uh, to game on it? Well, that's fine. That's fine. I, 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 I am okay for them to charge for doing multiplayer. Um, mm-hmm. A small annual fee to uh, to to have that. That's a lot of horsepower, and that costs them a lot of money to do. So I'm fine with it. I'm just saying, give me some of those front end apps that do not cost them bandwidth, that do not cost them right anything. It's 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 an extra measure in which to sell a box because when you're comparing uh, these consoles, and maybe maybe it's just check marks. You know, sometimes they throw it in there just to say, okay, well we have that too. That's a check mark. Yeah. It's Netflix. It's Amazon. It's Vudu. It's Hulu. And, and they have to do it's a better job. They have to do a better job of allowing it, getting apps onto their console. I know uh, they've talked about this on Twitter before. How ex- he's wanted to get a channel on Xbox, and how expensive it is to create because you have to use a Microsoft certified uh, program um, application developer, and there are six figure numbers Whoa. to get the app onto. I heard that show. And yeah. Discovery just did it with Revision 3, and they got it done. But So that is, I mean, that is a big barrier to entry, where Roku, you have every kind. Yeah, Roku is easy to get on, not which as is, hard, not nearly so, as hard. So it's like if you're just concentrating on the living room and you think that's your big play, you know, to, to separate yourself. Listen, you're going to get your gamers, like we said. If you have the titles, the gamers will go. But for that next level, you have to figure out how to get the, the channels on there. You know, and it's not only you're not only fighting Roku and Apple TV in those. Samsung keeps really, really upping the smart TVs. Yeah, smart TV I, stuff. Yep. Uh, um, so. I wanted to pre-order, guys. I I promise you, I wanted to pre-order. I when I I saw the price, I was like, oh, that's a nice new tablet. <laughs> that's a nice new tablet. Those those eight inch tablets are getting advertised, and I want oh, one bad. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the Acer Iconia W3. When is this thing shipping, Darren? When when uh, when do I get tempted? Let me ask, uh, June. Whoa, is it June 10th? Hold on. Uh, it's June July, July, I think. July. Oh, wait. I think they're going to be July. First week of is July. It? Okay. There's yeah. a rumor. There, I didn't think something it was I read that. on something I read on Twitter that there's suspicion that these tablets are the ones that they're going to give away at build to the uh, attendees. This uh, Iconia W3. Darren, aren't you going to something here? Soon? I, yeah, I think that would be the one. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, this article on this, and it's weird. It says ship next weekend. But, okay. Oh, it's a different... Like, W3 would ship next weekend from InfoWorld. I mean, well, well, InfoWorld says next weekend, and they no, printed maybe. this on the yeah, 10th. I mean, we're still two weeks away from uh, build. Right. So, do you... Do you think they would? I mean, I saw that too. The thing about build, but do would they go with an Acer and not something they? You know, we just saw what they did with Surface, a tech ad, obviously. Um, yeah. Either the next iteration of that or something. I, I read an interesting follow up to that whole tech ed, uh, you know, Surface Pro, Surface RT thing, and uh, uh, Rod Trent, who's the IT community manager at Windows IT Pro. Um, wrote about it, and he's talked to a few people, and apparently that deal's going to hit some other Microsoft conferences. They say, okay, that for the hundred dollar RT and the you know the three hundred dollar four hundred dollar Surface Pro. I had a line on one. I had a <laughs> I had a scheme. I almost pulled the trigger. It, it would have been half the At price I paid for yeah. the Pro. I mean, absolutely half. It it wasn't the three ninety nine that uh, it was on sale for, but uh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just bought a microserver for the other podcast. No. <laughs> no. Richard, what do you think of the an 8-inch tablet running full Windows 8? That's uh, my... You know what? I My big worry on that is going to be... And this is a full Windows OS, right? This right, is right. a dick-style Windows, so that means legacy apps will run. There's the full-blown desktop. 
to me, that desktop, the, the touch targets are already a bit of a challenge on the Surface RT. So I think that's just going to be, and somebody just said it in the chat room, it needs to have a digitizer. I mean, I'm sure you can use one of those, um, you know, those styluses with the big fat bulb on the end that mm -hmm. acts like and a finger. And hope that it works. That, that, and hope it works, but it's not going to be small enough target. You'd have to have a digitizer on that tablet screen to be able to work right like the Pro has. So I, I think desktop is going to be a challenge on something that small. I think I think the modern interface, the Metro interface, would be superb on there. I mean, it's showing, what, three lines of uh, tiles, I think, in the screenshot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get on a Surface, unless, of course, you use that registry hack I use in I get four. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it would work, Those that size would work very well in RT, and because you don't use the desktop for that much stuff. So yeah. I, I just think it's going to be too small. RT. And my eyes are bad already, so I don't need small. I really eyes. wonder if... Acer is would have leaned RT for a device like this, and just from the bad press and everything else, like you know what? Let's it, it's an Atom processor. It's a x86. We can run the whole thing. Let's just put it on there and let our users do what they want with it. No, I. You know what? I it to me the smaller screen size is perfect for RT, and it's like I said, especially the modern interface and the mm -hmm. and modern apps. That's what it's really built for. And, you know, the desktop side, can you imagine trying to use something like Windows Live Writer or, you know, some Word, even Word or Excel PowerPoint on an 8-inch tablet? That just, I just seems so small. Yeah, I, I don't, I agree with you. I think the form fa desktop is, desktop on the Surface is bad enough, is bad, on the RT is, is yeah, rough enough. Yeah, it's a challenge. Well, so, folks, this thing's going to come with a full-fledged copy of Office Home and Studio. That's true. That's Your right. nightmares Ten -inch or are going smaller to tablets. Be... They're going to give away Office on it. Yeah, which is smart, which is great, by the way. Well, this thing starts at uh, 349, 379 for the 32 gig. 379 for the 20, 32 gig and 429 or something like that for, for that the 64. 64. That's excellent price. Yeah. I mean, it really is. So it's this is one of those sink or swim kind of products that Acer yeah. is very known for releasing out there. We don't know if anybody wants it, but yeah. here it is. Oh, and oh, by the way, Acer is the company that has kind of been poking at Microsoft about Windows 8 like since forever. They right? did, yes. Yeah. Um, somebody in the chat room just said you can't snap with it, um, but they did lower the uh, resolution requirement for the smaller tablets, and I think you can snap You should be able with to snap. that smaller res resolution. Yeah. I but, thought 8.1 8 was going to fix that. Yeah, but On here's these guys. Well, they're going to they're going to 8 one's going to fix the what it's mandatory now. You have, you know, whatever the one third, two two-third split is. Mm -hmm. uh, 8.1's going to allow you to split the screen in any level you want. Right. Right right now in the current um, version of Windows 8 and RT, there's a minimum resolution to use Snap. But That's right. The uh, what's interesting to me, like people like us who know how to use the interface, we could use this at just like we would use RT. Yeah. You know, we could say, you know, but it's when you market it as the run full Windows, that's again, it's it's that whole thing. You're setting yourself up just to be piled on. Yeah, no, you're setting a, it's a big failure, a big big round of hurt coming. But you know, guys like us, we do. We know the limits mm -hmm. of the machine. We're not going to try to, oh, you know, push it. Pat. Well, we are. Trust. We're we're going to, and we're going to yell about it. But. Only a little video production, run Photoshop, you know, about 150 yeah, layers. Can you imagine doing something <laughs> yeah. like Photoshop okay. on the tablet? <laughs> yeah, on that little Atom. You know, With I was telling cloud. you guys earlier. Well, I know I was in the um, I was in the Surface Geeks forums, and I said, you know, I took I took a netbook, an Acer netbook, to CES one year because the prior year, I for my first day, it was my first CES, I shoved in my back backpack a like a 12 pound, 15 inch laptop, an HP laptop with full recording gear and everything. I probably weighed an extra 60 pounds with the gear that I brought with me. And I was dying by the end of the day. You guys know CES and trade shows. I was dying. As soon as I got home, I bought one of those little uh, Asus uh, XP netbooks, and I did end up carrying that to the next uh, CES, and I did a lot of work on it, guys. I ran yeah, I love my netbook. I had an Asus netbook. Loved it. I, I ran Audacity. I mixed a show and did all the things that I need to do with, with audio mixing and filtering and all that and published it straight from the Sahara Hotel uh, <laughs> way back in the day 
and uh, <laughs> got it done on a netbook. So I still have a I netbook have optimism here, so. for this little Acer. I agree. I, I have a netbook. You know, I got the HP, and this is the one that had the two gigs of RAM back when they only had five, twelve, or one gig. We and, all uh, stuck in, yeah, a little extra. Yeah. A little extra RAM, and it worked. It still runs XP, though. I never put 7 on. It still runs. Oh, I put 7 works. immediately. It still works, and it runs. Backed it up on my home server and dropped 7 on it immediately. <laughs> That's back when 7 was beta. So That was uh, that was quite a while ago. Okay, I'm looking forward to it, guys. I want to get my hands on it. Yes, I would love a digitizer on it. I'm afraid of what uh, a digitizer price would do to it, but I'm also excited. Lenovo has the, uh, I don't know how they pronounce it, the, like a mix the mix. The mix 8 and the photos of this that leaked to the press uh, show a very very I mean we're talking like iPad mini type thinness to it so one can only presume that the processor inside it is as well no it's going to be you think it's arm it's, it's too thin. arm if it's that yeah, thin. if it's that thin it's too thin I some guys in the in the forum said it's it's probably going to be an ARM processor, but I'm still holding out hope as well because the Lenovo looks just I mean it looks like a quarter of an inch thick, just like an iPad Mini. You know, Lenovo really has been, and I think it's been even before Windows 8, making some great hardware. I went into a Microsoft store this past weekend, and I tweeted about my not so great experience and they never responded but anyway uh, I went <laughs> one of the malls out in Jersey has um, a really big Microsoft store and I, it was the first time they had the, the yoga but a bigger mod, I think it was, a, it was a 14 inch uh, it was a new yoga yeah Re it was listen for a 14 I mean, this is not tiny it's not going to weigh a pound but if, like it's 3 pounds it claimed 8 to 10 hours of battery life it was just a nice piece of hardware um, and it's good to see I think that quietly, like all these, you know, we see all these funky machines coming out of all these other companies. Um, Lenovo still, I think, between the carbon, uh, their yoga models, I think they're the only ones who so far have done a pretty good job with Windows 8. Yeah. Now, Lenovo owned 2012 uh, right. when it comes to uh, Windows PCs. They, they did a, a really good job. Dude, uh, I went with them at CES. The R7. What's that? The R7. The Acer R7 that moved the trackpad from the front of the keyboard to the back, and it has that uh, the I forget what they call the hinge. The swivel monitor thing. The, the, yeah, it, I forget the the name of the hinge they gave it, but it can be done into a tablet format. But they've moved that trackpad behind the keyboard so that you can bring the monitor down and set it right at the top of the keyboard, hide the trackpad, do type and touch. Yeah, that's just one thing. It says I'm going to use a mouse. <laughs> They'll be like, well, I, I use a mouse on Windows 8. I use a mouse on my tablet when I'm sitting at a desk like I am tonight on my Surface. I think that's pretty cool. It, it brings the keyboard closer to you. It's unique, yeah. Um, ledge. So, yeah, it is definitely unique. I think it's a business machine. I think a consumption machine. It's and priced machine very that's nicely, expensive. too, for the juice it's got. Yeah. So, All right. Keep me going. Windows right. 8 1. Amy, well, Ed Bot had a report that... Uh, He's claimed, you know, this showing some studies with the 8.1 blue. It's it's made just it's going right after the uh, mobile market, and and that people are concentrating too much on the start button. <laughs> and I think we've all agreed. First of all, that the whole idea of the start, this big hub about a start button, and literally all it is is a pinned start button. Uh, <laughs> yeah, instead of the little icon that pops up now in the corner. <laughs> right, it, just, when you go down it, it just pins it. So uh, just interesting. You know, given the numbers, and we see the iPad numbers and the uh, cell phones and laptops compared to tablets, that Microsoft needs to get all in with uh, mobile and tablet. And I'm a little – listen, I, he might be right about where Microsoft's going, but I'm a little skittish to going a little too fast away from desktop and – Something but happened they haven't gone away from desktop, though. Right. Windows 8 has a full-blown functioning desktop, right. and this is what this is what's kind of blown me away in this whole thing. You know, I, I wrote this a couple weeks ago. You know, they said the start, they confirmed the start menu was coming back. The first picture of it came out of Computex next last week in Taiwan, and but it's just going to the start screen that's already on Windows 8. So you know, I. I if you didn't think Microsoft wasn't heading into this tablet mobile foray with Windows 8, yeah, you know that's where they're headed. And and Ed kind of confirms that and says, "Look, it, 
that start button is minimal in this whole thing. And I think a lot of people are going to freak out when they install 8.1 and that start but that start menu button just goes to the start screen. I, I agree. think they're that, looking for the old school Windows 7 style start menu. I agree, and I think a lot of that's just based on, and we, we've Dave and I have talked about this week after week after week, how many articles have been written without saying it, insinuating that we're all getting our start menus back. Right. But no one has ever said that Nobody's at all. ever clearly said it, right. And um, I agree with you. I, like, like I said before, we understand how to use these devices. Um, but I don't... The, the path they're going and the whole idea of, like, you know, RT, people said eventually the desktop's going to disappear. Um, and on our regular, you know, if you're on a desktop or uh, even a bigger laptop, to me, I use the Metro interface in that case as my start menu, and I'm fine with it. I can f- configure it. I can use it as a start menu. Um, but the whole idea of that, that more apps are going to move into that and we're going more full screen. If I'm in front of that whole, you know, the 27-inch monitor, I don't want everything full screen. Yeah. Um, that worries me a little bit, and I think, again, we'll get into this in a few minutes, the WWDC stuff. I thought what Apple did with their desktop was very interesting and not what a lot of people thought they were going to do. A lot of people thought they'd follow Microsoft more into the integration. We start seeing the ios vacation, which starting a little bit before. Oh, gotcha, yeah. But they've re- they're saying, you know what, and they use the word 10 years quite a few times. For the next 10 years, we're giving you this desktop operating system. Hmm. And I don't think that was an accident. I think that's in pure response. If you want a desktop, we're going to be the one to offer it to you. Hmm. So Yeah, then they better make it more affordable. For, 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 for. <laughs> well, that's another issue. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of these guys, some of these new guys that are, you know, seeing Metro for the first time, and they're, they're just like, where's my stuff? That's it. I've just gotten some emails. Oh, I get just, some emails from even friends who I've told. <laughs> help them find their stuff. You move my cheese. Yeah. Show me my cheese. It's over here. Here's your desktop. Here's how you can group new icons. You want to go back to Metro to play with that new stuff? You hit this little button down here on the yep. bottom left. That's what I tell people. Just the, <laughs> Somebody the said t- Apple desktop oh. doesn't have a start button or start menu. Right, that is true. <laughs> no, the, it's got uh, a dock. It does have a it's dock. It's got a dock. And that's where the, yeah, you put your stuff there, and you can still drop things all over the desktop. You can fill your desktop yep. up as much as you want, so. Just, uh, but it is interesting to see. I think a lot of it's was that planned? Is it in response to? And where is everyone going to go? And you know, who knows? Like I, you know, people worried about business and enterprise in Windows 8, and the amount of enterprise or business even thinking about Windows 8 right now is so minimal. As they're just starting their Windows 7 rollouts. Um, I, I said this before. Microsoft still has th- two to three years to really worry about the enterprise, and it would not surprise me if at some point there is not two separate operating systems, but two install tracks about how the systems will work and what you run on and what you start. And we'll have, you know, now you have boot to start, you know, boot to desktop on this 8.1. I think that's the first, you know, the first little nugget of cheese, as you can call it. Yeah, I think you could see the next version of Windows sensing what type of device it's on and going to the interface that is appropriate for whichever one. Right. I mean, I'm going to... Uh, on my RT, you know, I've moaned and complained about the desktop, which I finally learned last week. You can actually close it like an app and <laughs> take it out of the stack, you know, the swipe stack. But, um, you know, I, a Surface is a tablet. And, you know, except for the Office apps and some control panel settings, which is going to be solved during the 8.1 update because they're going to come into the Metro side, I don't need a desktop. I mean, I really don't. Things are running yeah. in my IE10 browser and the Metro browser and... We've said all of us have said it. All of yeah. us have said it, and they're just not ready, Rich. They're, they're no, getting, I know. It's they're going to roll it. In you talk about massive jump. You think the reaction to Windows Eight has been something else? And, uh, yeah, they're going to give it to you soon, and not yeah. not all in eight one, but soon they're going to say, "Here, here's your control panel. You just put control panel in there, and all the things that you need to do." Yep. I imagine yeah. they've got a team significant rewriting it right now. Yeah, the and, significant uh, part of the control panels come into Metro this eight point one update. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, and I I look forward to that. I think that's gonna be I think that's gonna be fun to live in Metro with uh, with uh, tap to change all my control settings. Yep. I think that's gonna be a it's gonna be a fine day. Now uh, the chat room is uh, really <laughs> lively today. We've got uh, some good guys out there. We've got a couple of guys saying, "Hey, just pin stuff to the your taskbar." 
in Windows 8. Just fill your bottom bar. That's if what I do. <laughs> your favorites. Just pin IE down there, and, and you're done. Just pin well, IE was there to begin with, but uh, <laughs> right. just pin your Office apps, whatever you want. It's right down there. It's, uh, see, I also don't get this desire for the old start menu because it was, it, as far as dynamic and live and flexible, you get so much more out of the start screen, in my opinion. And also, like you guys have said, you got most everything else still on the desktop to stick stuff on that toolbar, you know, the taskbar and have shortcuts. Oh, the start menu to it's a lazy new person is the worst thing in the world. And I'm inherently lazy. I don't want to have to click here, drag up, yeah. hold it. Okay, now it populates. You go over to the right, click. <laughs> you know how find I use accessories. It? I type okay. in the search box nope. for the app or program I want exactly. to open. Windows key, bam. And you can N -O -T -E. do that with the start screen. Enter. You just in the start screen, you just start typing, and it starts sorting. Now I got to give it this. Eight point one is going to bring that search, where it's going to lay that search out. No longer where you have to click on a subcategory like settings or right. files yeah, to that, find. That it's going to list them like the old search did in Windows 7 start menu. And I like that because that to me, that means I don't have to make that extra click. I can just tab to it or tap on it or whatever. Yeah, how many times I, did we all sit back in our chair? Okay, please now click start, click programs, click accessories, <laughs> click remote desk. You know, it's like, oh my God, how much time did we wait, waste? And then they're like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. Do that again. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta go start, all the way. In. Yeah, big program. Cascading menus. Ah, oh, just. And I, just I've been refreshing a customer's Windows Vista PC today, guys, and it has been complete oh and God, utter why? chaos trying to figure out where stuff is because of having come. You know, now since then we've right. been in Windows Seven and. Isn't that uh, fun? How you get thrown Windows back 8. into the old days? Oh, You're like, God. wow, I just UAC, got transported. Into I don't remember user uh, control being that irritable. It were irritating, but today I've wanted to throw that stuff out like you wouldn't believe. You know, but that's funny though because we as geeks we don't understand that a lot of these folks that use them out there, the majority yeah. of them, and my wife is one. I know people in your family are them. They click. They don't control C, control V, yeah. control B for bold. They don't know that that exists. So. Yep. A lot of it is just education. I always thought that I could create a little presentation and just take it around to every business in the world, and I could speed up the world by a factor. The, the amount of money that the co corporations use to train um, you, uh, every year in IT is unreal, and that's why I think they're freaking out a little bit about Windows 8. If they but, just knew about Control-C, Control-V, Control-B. Well, that would be a good start, but what, great start. what about the fact even when you turn on Windows 8, they found they had that little you know tutorial play. Yeah, the right. video you couldn't do much with. You, but they had the right idea, but again, they just didn't finish it. It was no fun, and I see now a lot of the um, OEMs are actually putting tutorials right on their yeah, stuff. Yeah, right there, cool. and there's apps now in the store that show all that. My, my most popular YouTube video these days is one I did of one of the of the consumer preview, a walkthrough about how to navigate Windows 8 with all the hot corners and stuff like that. I mean, it's it had over 40,000 views. Videos. My Windows Home Server 2011 walkthrough is still very popular. People yell at me, too. I get a lot of bad <laughs> comments. I never can't get anything right. But you can't make everyone happy. Can't make them all happy. Let's move on. That's I need to. I need to keep it going, guys. Uh, let's get back into Surface. We talked about Tech Ed uh, for uh, selling the Surface uh, RT and the Pro, but there was an update. There was an update, and we uh, talked about it. We hinted towards it last week, Darren, that there were some keyboard we shortcuts and cool we things. <laughs> we did talk about the uh, big thing was the. Um, for the Surface RT and the Surface Pro, the click on keyboard, touch and type, um, there's a software update. So now you get some new function keys. Uh, your okay, top row keys. Go to Paul Thera, Go to winsupersite.com. There's a list. Just go read Paul's site. Because I, I read the list last week. <laughs> I don't think, there's, a, there's a list. <laughs> um, Download it here. Yeah, pretty Paul much. Thera, it's got it. The man. Um, it's actually pretty cool, though, because that top row on this, uh, I'll look at my Surface now, has more of your volume and all that stuff. Now they become more functional towards like what your keyboard used to having. So all right, there's some, yeah, there's some good links there. All these links will be in the show notes, so 
Never fear, they're all. <laughs> but dead. yeah, we did we did read through that last week. So I don't want to, I don't want to start we going did. through the control. We did. I was just messing with it because it was like painful. Like do this for that, do this for that. And, uh, I'm sure I everybody just, went straight to their keyboards. We have some Bing stuff this week. I heard uh, Bing some, in the news a lot, and that doesn't some, happen. Well, let's start with the straight Bing stuff. Uh, Bing Maps continue on. They added 270 terabytes of uh, bird's eye imagery. Okay. And in some um, in venue maps, which is internal maps, but you know you always hear about Google Maps and Apple Maps. Bing has maps, and they're updating them, and uh, they're pretty useful. You know, um, I use on my 920. I use mostly the Nokia stuff, but the Bing Maps. You know, I don't know Richard what you use on your phone, but Bing Maps work. I, I actually, yeah, I use Bing Maps for quick searches, but uh, I actually use those, the here, you know, the Nokia right. here, drive beta, and um, here maps. I used it a lot on my motorcycle ride a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, so we use the Nokia stuff. But Bing is, uh, they're go, still going all in with their maps. They're still, listen, they're, they're, they're part of the game. And that'll bring us into something inevitably we had to talk to, which talk about, which is WWDC this week, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. Bing um, and Siri sitting in a there tree. There you go. Siri, which is the... M-A-P-P-I-N-G. <laughs> I hope not Sorry. mapping. Cause the searching, map actually. Topic. Searching is the right <laughs> word. Searching, yeah. Siri, which for the three of people who probably never heard of it, don't know, is the voice uh, act, the voice query tool on iOS. Well, now instead of using Google to answer your questions, we'll use Bing. And um, the, Google is still the default op, the default search on Safari on the web browser on the phone, but Bing is now. Uh, who has the best Surface podcast on the internet? What's a surface? Doing this live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's stuck, fellas. Sorry. <laughs> Are you on iOS 7? Uh, yeah, I am. Ah. There we go. You already broke uh, Siri. Did you, you can change to a male Siri. voice now if you want to. I know that was big news. Oh, I read that. I saw that today. Somebody said it'd be a, it could be a male voice option. I think that was because everyone, including is Microsoft, is mocking. In Chicago. Okay, here's the weather for Chicago, Illinois, between today and Monday. Well, not bad. There's your screen. There you go. It's seventy two degrees. It. It's 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 seventy two degrees. It doesn't tell it you. Sounds like old. It looks a little Vista ish there. A little or Yahoo weather. It it hold on yeah, a second. Yeah. That was great. She told you it's seventy two degrees. Didn't tell you to go run into your basement because there are tornadoes all around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that was the best uh, response. Should I be concerned about tornadoes? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know what you should do. <laughs> she has no clue. <laughs> you, could, you could change the default voice. It, it is still default, the regular Siri voice. Uh, I'll oh, do a okay. quick just rundown. Um, they started with uh, some new hardware coming out, MacBook Airs updated to the Haswell chips. Um, which will give it a little better battery life. Uh, starts at 9.99 for the 11 inch, and then goes up from there. There's a 13 inch. Didn't touch. A lot of people are upset. Didn't touch the MacBook Retina Pros. Those stayed the same for now. Yeah, that's but what everybody wanted, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, which someone said they probably couldn't get it to run all the pixels on the screen off that chip for the battery life needed. Um, the Mac Pro, which has been kind of not used in years, and I have quite a few clients that have some Mac Pros who needing some serious upgrading uh, came out, and it looks like your trash can in your bathroom. Um, it's very has very powerful Xeon chips, uh, dual video cards, a Thunder port, Thunderbolt two port <laughs> that could port. Thunderport. It's the Th Mac trash show. <laughs> Thunderbolt two ports that could you could push up to four four K monitors on that. Wow. Dave, we have found your home theater PC. Yeah, that's all I need. That's all I can afford. You know, they're pegging this thing from to start at about four thousand dollars. I'm guessing it's going to start higher. You know, that's some things that um, I don't want to spend long on the Mac Pro, but right. you know what? These Mac guys have been asking for a new Mac Pro for two years now. More so than that. Last year, years. last year they right. gave them an iteration, mm -hmm. so they gave them a little update, and they told them, hang on, just hang on. So 
you know, I I know the mad guys are not going to be. They're just waiting to flop over their wallets. But I they're would not. be pissed off. They're not. They're pissed. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I would be pissed off. You made me wait this long for you to make a statement about style and non upgradability. I mean, you just you just nailed it. And one of my clients works in media. And they have a couple Mac Pros that are um, production piece, production machines, mm -hmm. and they're connected um, by fiber to SANS. I mean, these things yeah. are workhorses. And when they heard you couldn't upgrade the video card, you can't upgrade the RAM, you can't do anything. It's all soldered together like the iMac is. No, you can't upgrade the video card. But, I mean, granted, it does have a workhorse of a dual chip a video card. Yeah, but, but not the best. People are already saying it's already not the best one out there. So how, when it finally ships, it's definitely not going to be the best one out there. Right. And if this machine's supposed to last for, listen, if you're going to spend, and it's going to start four to five thousand. But you know, for a lot of these people, they spend eight to ten thousand on this thing when they're done specking it. Yeah, and you know what? You know what I years. call this thing? It's the Final Cut Pro Mac. That's what it is. Because what about what about the audio guy who needs like a dual Z on? I you know, know I think, where's where's his Mac Pro? Well, Where's his works. trash bucket? Does he I get a silver it. trash bucket with a, a dual Xeon instead of a dual video card? He gets the high-end iMac. The high-end I iMac. And it's, yeah, I didn't know that it would, there was so much uh, lashback about yeah, it. A ton. There's been but a ton. I would be livid. This thing decked out is going to be $6,000. I bet you it's going to be $6,000. And who in their right mind except for maybe one or two studios is going to be able to put 4K on this thing. Well, I think this is great for uh, PC manufacturers. There's a big opening in that market. I mean, I don't know how big that market is to begin with. But you know, but one of the dumbest things about this whole setup, and I think it was The Verge had pictures of it right after the event. The, it's, so it's a cylinder, and the top of it is the fan. And it, it's going to have a lot of heat, so it needs to exhaust. <laughs> yeah. What so, happens when... Wait, wait. Everyone's going to put stuff on top. If you put this in a desk in an office... If I stick it on their floor or on their desk, the first thing someone's going to do is stick a binder on there. <laughs> yeah. Is so, it going to explode? Is it going to melt the binder or is the computer done? It's going to overheat and gone. I think this is it's you know, it's bound to happen and I've got I've got something to follow up with this that I've written about before. And we'll, uh, one, one more one more I think you're stepping it. You yes. know what? They ah oh, it this is the power. This is an opening. This is the performer performa PC of Apple, which was their you know big. This is their Alienware. Desktop. This is but their they, Alienware but, machine, right. or you know that like. Right, that like, but it's ridiculous. The, the performa was their after Steve Jobs left. There, this big next to show they could still do it the first time. And it This is a this is a slap in the face to their really. The core customer of Apple who's been there for 30 years because no matter what, with the ups and the downs, they've had the video editing market. They've had the audio editing market. They've had the movie studios. To me, that's um, it for some – I think Final Cut Pro, that's its last leg. That's, that's it. Those guys that were just Pro on tools, the right? fence about it, about going with those other programs, whatever they are, mm -hmm. those professional programs, I think that's it. I agree. I, no upgradeability. Uh, the iMac, I don't think, is enough for those guys. And really, and, we've all been in server rooms or rooms where you have a lot of machines. C cylinder? Well, now I get it. It's that's it's the Mac thing. It's the Apple thing, right? It's a statement. It, it's this. It's a work of art. But I I, I think they're they're gonna miss it on this one, guys. They're they're gonna miss it. Oh, but don't forget when you're down there. Uh, taking the melted binder <laughs> off of your Mac and you turn it around, the lights will come on to help you find the oh, good thing. melted binder. And it, someone said it's going to look real pretty. You know, Now it looks all pretty. Wait to put the 60 wires into it. Who cares what it looks like? <laughs> Wait till you put uh, Richard's dust bunnies. He's got a post in <laughs> chat. You put Richard's <laughs> dust bunnies in that thing and uh, you're not going to yep. have a very pretty cylinder. It will be. A waste basket at that point. All right. So that's um, enough. We don't want to get totally <laughs> go no, for now. No, right? we don't. Um, so they are updating to their next uh, desktop operating system too, which we'll talk about for about thirty seconds. <laughs> it's called Maverick. Maverick. 
Mavericks. Don't Makes me yeah, the Mavericks gun. are a set of beaches. Yeah, I used to live in yeah. California. Rich, right. you were an East Coast sailor, were you not? Yes, I was. Only was, I was in West California Coast for sailor. boot camp and school. It's yeah, a see, I was a West right? Coast sailor. Uh, the Mavericks are uh, outside, uh, I think, uh, Los Angeles. I, I don't remember where. I've never been to them. I've okay. only been San Diego beaches. And um, they're, they're a dangerous beach. They're, they're not for just everyday Joe to vacation there and, and throw out a boogie board. So I can see that. I and mean, that's It's weird. It's weird. They're going to get a lot of Top Gun references like uh, you're – Mavericks on your iMac and the Goose <laughs> on your uh, on your right. Mac Mini or whatever. Yeah, so uh, I understand it though. Okay, so th they're going with California places, but that's fine. That's fine. That's, that's fine. What, what you want to do? It's better right. than cats, if you ask me. Okay, that's fair enough. There are two features I think uh, that I thought that were worth talking about. One was um, notifications from your iOS device also show up in your. Um, on OS 10 while you're using it, and they're actionable. So if I get rid of, if you know, if I get a new text message, it'll show me on here. I could delete it on my computer. It's deleted on my phone. That's great. Google's doing the same thing with Chrome and Android. That's smart. It makes sense. Great. The second well, I one, technically get alerts on all my Windows devices these days. My Surface, my phone, my desktop. <laughs> you get all those uh, beeps at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, I get them everywhere, Sorry. especially tweets. It's in stereo. The uh, the second feature, which I thought was awesome, works with Apple TV. And for the, it's kind of funny to us. You know, Windows people, we complained about our dual monitor support. Our dual monitor support, multi-monitor support, blew away Apple's. Apple's was backwards and didn't work right. So they finally came up to speed in their multi-monitor. And they actually, they did it. a pretty darn good job this time. They did a really good job. Two years behind, but right. they did a good job. But the coolest feature, if you have an Apple TV, wirelessly, you, before you're able to mirror your screen onto your Apple TV, so you could send to AirPlay, it goes to Apple TV. Now you can use that TV in any room as your second screen. Right. Not just mirrored. So you could be this, I mean, for 99 bucks, I'll throw this in every conference room in America. I just have a Mac sitting around. You know, I could do what I want, throw the second screen up, throw the PowerPoint just on the second screen, and off we go. 99 bucks. Yeah. Well, no, the I power of the Apple TV has long been worth the $99 because there's always a Mac or an iPhone in the organization. Right. And it, it's pretty handy in the in the boardroom. So I, I, I get it there. And I like how it's not just a mirror now, it's actually a second screen. So you can, I, if you have a couple in your house even, I know Andy and Notko laughed about he's going to have one in every room now. So wherever he takes his laptop, now he has a second monitor with him because he has a 45-inch in every room. They didn't, they didn't do anything that I thought was a move towards touch. Not out of the traditional touch, you know, like iOS or the... Correct. Kind of stuff. Yeah, Correct. Nothing Everyone thinks that they're going to merge these two platforms, but they, they said that they've got a good 10 years of OS building to do, and these updates that they gave us uh, on this WWDC that I saw, I didn't see any, any real, like, hey, we're looking at desktop touch in the future. I think they went the opposite way. I think yeah, I, I think I, I said before during the Windows 8 segment that um, I think this is Apple saying, hey, we're, we're going to be the desktop company. We're, we're here for you. We're, you know, we all know you're comfortable with just the icons in your, in your start menu or taskbar or launch bar or whatever. Uh, we're here for you. I don't know if that's going to work, but I think that's uh, where they go. And now they have... Either that or their desktop is soon a portal. <laughs> So, right. Oh, that's because true. Because their, their Mac Pro line's gonna die. <laughs> their iMacs and Mac. Well, their Mac. Their their laptops still sell. Their laptops are still great devices. Um, and now they have tabs and Finder. I think was another cool little feature. A little feature. A little tweak that third-party developers have done for years. Now they just build. But there and that that is like, I mean, that's not two years behind on multi-screen. That's like six, seven years behind. Their Finder. That's the worst. I know they don't want you to mess with files. They don't want you to mess with files, but pros want to mess with files. But hold on, Dave. Go to your Windows Explorer. We don't have tabs. I, I wish I had tabs. I don't want. I have 13 file windows open on my desktop. You know, oh, you're hidden, right. You're right. Hidden, hidden behind Gosh. everything. I wish I could tab them up. And I know there was third-party stuff to the same thing. It, I think it wouldn't take Microsoft long to go tab, though. You got to think about it because it's there's it's there's such a cross between Internet Explorer and Windows Explorer that it might not be that hard to implement. Well, I hope they. But do Microsoft's it. not going to go there. Microsoft's heading in a whole different direction. 
Right, agreed. And uh, and I guess the big thing is mobile, right? I think that's what I know. Dave wrote something about it. I wrote something about it. Uh, iOS didn't seven. Get any feedback? They're, I was they're actually, to stir the pot, guys. There's actually a, a march being planned from Cupertino right now. They're just gathering the horses, <laughs> and they're they're march. They're gonna you know come with their swords towards Indianapolis. Um, but, <laughs> they come lynch me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Lynch um, all the naysayers. I got two nasty comments that I had. A, I just didn't approve. But <laughs> the, yeah. I mean, too many curse words to put on my own stupid blog. The um, so iOS seven. That we heard they were going to flatten it. They flattened it. You know, flatter look, much more colorful than we heard originally. It was going to be remember black or white or gray or white. Um, they, they took a lot of. They flattened, work. Darren, but they did not say flat. I went back. I watched this thing, and uh, on my own time, and they never said the words flat. Oh well, of course, because that would say, "Hey, we're using Microsoft." They said, "We're using Apple Design." Right. Well, that's fine. Um, they very colorful, but the oddest thing to me, they spent their first ten minutes showing off a weather app that every platform has had forever that shows raindrops when it's raining. That was a little weird. Um, yeah. Um, so you using it? So what do you think? I haven't used it long, guys. Okay. I haven't had a whole lot of time. I had time to. Uh, man, I tell you, when this screen first came up, and I saw the colors, and it it is like, I thought Walt Disney transported himself to my kitchen and threw up on my iPhone. It was just that bizarre. This is bizarre colors, guys. I'm going to go to gear cam, and I don't know how good I can show this to you, but it is just, it is weird. Now, I like some of what they've done here. Um. They stole a lot of stuff. I'm not, maybe shouldn't say stole, but they did take some things and improve upon them. They're slide up from the bottom. I actually kind of like. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, flashlight people, but you're out of business. Um, antitrust. <laughs> well, they, they don't have a big enough monopoly anymore. And that was one of Darren's uh, uh, comments. Is they they took a lot of things that a lot of developers worked very hard on, and they just uh, I don't know what the official term for it is, but they Sherlock them is the official Sherlock term. I was gonna say yeah. midnight in them because yeah. the the sun's going down on those apps because all you have to do, guys, is swipe up flashlight. Now to me, that's handy. That is handy. That this is a this is like a little tool in your pocket. But uh, it took you like three swipes to close that. <laughs> Did it? One, yeah. It, uh, one, two. But what, what if I hit my button? No, no. You were trying to swipe down, and it uh, looked like it took a couple swipes before it went down. Oh, and I'm I'm off to the side here, really bad too. So look at some of the animations. Did you see some how they're growing animations and closing animations now? Do you have messages on there? Because that's the one I laughed at. Messages, yeah. you could swipe left and you could swipe right. Okay. Whoever thought of such a thing. Messages, you're going to see my personal stuff. Oh, well, you don't have to show it to us. Swipe, now, if you, can you swipe left or right? Is it? Oh, if I'm in a message. Yeah, maybe it's in your... I don't know where. They just showed in messages. You know, I don't have it to... Oh, it's not working. Uh, that still looks a little bit... That looked like the old app still. I don't know. Maybe it's an app upgrade. The, um, this is beta 1, and right. it, it's pretty kludgy. So... You know, somebody in the uh, chat room said Windows Phone needs a quick access function. Something, you know, similar to that where you do a quick swipe up in or whatever it is and you gain access to some kind of a center. Yeah. Uh, you guys saw um, uh, over the weekend the guy who posted the pictures from some Windows Phone development unit. Yeah, they said yeah. they had the blue yeah. unit. It, it was a blue unit, yeah, which that Windows Phone 8.1. And um, it had elements of a notification center and a lot of different stuff in it. Now, the, the story went well because apparently Microsoft contacted the guy and said, uh, can we get that back? And he said yes, and they, they paid to ship it back, and they sent him a brand-new Nokia Lumia 920. He bought it off of eBay. But uh, I, I think Microsoft is trying to get there, you know, Absolutely. trying to improve upon what they've done with Windows Phone 8 so far. And but people, there's just people slick stuff in the iOS. I agree. There's some, you know, I've never extensively used an i uh, an iPhone. I've I've messed around with them and you know that kind of thing, but never extensively used them. 
Well, so, I, I can mean, tell I you, I daily drive. I've this was my daily driver for several years. Mm -hmm. Several years. I like what they've done. I mean, honestly, that's a picture of my kids on the top there. Um, they've done a good job. Some of these colors and some of their choices, I don't. I don't understand. I really don't. Um, the iTunes looks a little bit like a old one zoom thing coloring. that I thought was really cool. And I'm gonna show you here on this camera here is a simple. Uh, tap on the screen and pull down and you access your um, your search function this is the function on iPhone that works really well now in the past you would swipe all the way over to one side it doesn't work anymore it doesn't work anymore you would swipe over there and you would tap I would tap D-A-R-R-E and right. it would instantly find Darren Cohen's contact my text to him and all the emails that I've, I've I've done with him. Fantastic job. Now they've kind of moved it and they it's just a, a I can't do it and not look at it. It's there, just there a little swipe it. right there and it comes at the top. Now that's different because they have a top down swipe which was in iOS six. Notifications. Notification center. So which is little, still there, right? Notification center yeah. which is still there. Okay. Get rid of that. Now you've got swipe up. Dave, how many balls do you have? How many balls do I have in my game center? Is that what no, you're No, no, I'm talking about the the uh, the strength indicator. <laughs> oh, they changed it in iOS yeah, that, 7. That's how I knew when he it's posted not bars it's anymore. <laughs> I have 3 sweaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Everybody loves that, my sweaty now, balls. Now, but that's a pretty significant departure. Just one little thing. That's a pretty significant departure from the industry. Right? This I mean, is the industry major. uses bars. Has right. for years. This is Apple's... Yeah. Oh, no. See, I don't, I don't mind crap like that. I don't. I, That's visual. But I think it's also in response to the bars thing, especially in the little to big... Apple got a lot of crap with their iPhone 4. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. Yeah. That, uh, you know, it was only a two bar. It still works. I don't know why people, you know, they panicked. But The other thing is... Do you remember when Android came out with their little active desktop thing and yeah, it would move around and live backgrounds? Yeah, I think it was. Did Froyo was it two dot two that came with that? Yeah, yeah. This is what this has. I have a a, a background on here and it's pulsating. It's moving. It and also moves you, with your phone. If you tilt it, if you put a picture of your kids on here and their face is obscured by one of your icons, you tilt it. And it moves, and so you want to say uh, goodbye, battery life. That's what. That's your problem right there. The only thing I don't like about, I don't like about it is you click, tap, and you get your group. You get a little group of icons here, and now they've made it so you can put like unlimited groups in here. So I can, or unlimited icons where you were limited to like twelve. All right, but it. Uh, you have to keep swiping next and next and next. One th Which somebody in the chat room made a good point, though. The one thing iOS 7 does not do, once again, is bring uh, what they call uh, glanceability, the ability to just quickly look at the screen or to look at the icons, again, live tiles, to see what's going on or what the latest information is. Now, I, I typed back in the room and I said, that's a great point, but they might have even gotten accused of copying Microsoft to another whole level. You know, they're already getting banged on pretty good. Actually, I don't think they're getting banged on that hard about copying Android and Windows Phone. Uh, in fact, it's funny how most of the tech press is going, yeah, they copied them, but they did it better. They did it better, right. Yeah. They innovated. They don't like have glance and go. If what you're saying is you want glance and go, yeah. you have to pull down the center here. But and even that's you have today. Good. I showed you today, right? There's okay. a tab for but you're talking ball. about notification center. Notification right. center, which has improved a little bit. You got all your tweets that you missed. Okay. Those are my uh, mentions and here is emails coming up now. But so on far. that start screen, when you hit the button on the phone and turn on the screen, is there any indication to tell you that you've had tweets that you've missed or There'll anything be numbers. of that nature? It's still the old school, still the old school static icons. Yeah, with the little with bubble. The little See my little Twitter happen. bird there, okay. with the little red. But you don't know who one. that's from, you know, because no. on a Windows Phone, at least, it'll it'll rotate no, you and can show. Go into all, 
and you can see the tweets that I missed yeah, I, from I who think, and who and who and who. Right. I think what Richard's saying, okay. though, and I agree with him, it's the uh, Windows phone, we have the live tiles. Yep. Android, you have widgets. I can make my... and. Some Android iterations, the HTC One has the Blink, whatever they call it. You have all your feed right in front of you, almost like a Windows phone. That I just press the one button, light it up. Okay, I see everything, close it. Nothing, done. Where the Apple, you still have to go either into notifications. Full center. Um, oh, it pops there. up the round icon from Google+. Uh, Plus. There you go. The control center is what they're calling the bottom pull-up. That's bit, Android has that into their notification center. So it is they brought in stuff that they That's, had. It's like one big widget. <laughs> Everybody right. was asking for, one, for widgets, and Apple kind of complied by giving you one big widget. In Not the really, Apple because, because Android already has the notification center with the all those little buttons and indicators in their notification center. Oh, no, I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm not comparing. Yeah. Right, right. I'm just okay. saying but he, Apple he, people said, we want widgets. We want quick access to Wi-Fi. But I think, your clock's now, I think your clock actually shows the right time now. I think it is a live tile on your, um, on your phone. But on the iOS device, the, uh, I think that's actually new. They actually, the clock is it's a, oh, <laughs> it, shows, I, I it shows the real time. I don't but, even um, know where the clock is. Well, well, we have the clock at. One thing I, I still can't believe, especially when people have hundreds of apps on their phones, that there's no list function. I think that is just, you're five years behind. You have to swipe through either search, like you said, or swipe through each screen looking to remember where you put an app. There's no root rhyme or reason for an order. Where Windows Phone... You know, you have the There's list. There's no listing, like, alphabetically of what's installed on your phone? Um, no, never has been. Never has been. No. <laughs> but if you know if you know what you're looking for, you just tap. Let me see. I'm going to tap T-W-I. That sounds like the Windows 7 search men start menu search. Okay. It was slow, but it came up with Twitterific, Twitter, TweetBot. Right. And but Tweets. Tweets, but but the point there's no list, and uh, again, Windows Phone has it, Android has the list. Um, it's just so that's just such a simple like. I don't understand the point of not having an alphabetized or some kind of grouping. Um, I don't want to sit here and remember and like you know I go onto my iPad and it's like oh where did I put the tweet deck uh, icon? I think I think you're missing there. something there. I think from not having used this system. Mm -hmm. you're because I come from this I, and I, I used get, it for years I get your you used it for years I used I, it from the first iPhone iPhone 3G 3GS but see I know where my stuff is I used to always move it because I, I used to be downloading <laughs> like I, I may not order. know it's, this is just like getting directions from someone you ask for directions from an old timer. He's going to say, you know what? You're going to go down to this stop sign. You're going to hang a left, and then you're going to go until you hit that first dirt road. And when you see that burrow at that red fence, you take a right right there. And you, and you click on Twitter. <laughs> you just go to it. You find it because you know. It's like walking around your house in the dark. You just know. But what, I you don't know what. I have three or four weather apps on my on my phone, and if they're not on my start screen, mm -hmm. I have trouble finding them because I don't know what they're named. Okay, that's an that's there that's that's an issue. I'm not saying that issue, but the I, giving you the option. That's I don't one think thing. that's such a big deal. Okay, to me, that was the one thing I always wanted on my iOS device, even before I had a Windows Phone. Or, really, I just think. See, I want groupability on my Windows Phone. I want my own hub. Okay, give me my own hub. Where I can populate it with the stuff that I want. So, I think the larger point, because I'm sure we could, again talk about this for six hours, is iOS seven. Yeah, a lot of visual changes. I think we're agreed on that. They even mock themselves for some eschemorphism and all that. Um, the flattened design, some some little tweaks here and there, but it's still someone who bought the phone three years ago and had their iPhone three S or four iPhone four now is upgrading to the next phone. They'll know how to use it without training. Yes. And I think, again, this is 
you're seeing it's almost that Microsoft Windows problem. Windows decided that we're going to take the leap. We have to do something now with Windows 8. You know, it's going to, some people are going to panic. It's going to hurt some people, but we're going to, we're going to get left so far behind unless we, uh, unless we do it. Where Apple said, you know what? We can't do that to our users right now. And Apple's it might hurt them down the road. Self. Right. They're just saying, we can't, we can't. We have to keep those little numbers. That's what they're used to. That's, and Thank you, happens. Apple. Because I think it's, I think it's their own. I think eventually it's, and it's what you wrote, well, you wrote more about a hardware side. Hardware. No, but you're right. This update is more to their detriment than to their um, whatever the opposite of detriment is. The, the upside, the, <laughs> <Been well, there laughs> might have, like they might have limited the downside for now. They might have. They stopped some bleeding. They stopped some bleeding for now. How do you think the the broad, there's a lot of iOS users now on the iPad, on all generation of iPad, on all generation of iPhones. How do you think they're going to react to seeing this new look iOS? They'll either, I think they'll either hate it or be eh. It's fine. This works the same you know, way. You know, honestly, what I think now, do you know what it, I, I don't want to get in trouble by anybody, but to me, this is a girl's phone now. <laughs> It's got cutesy little colors. I don't think that's an accident. I don't think that's an accident. Flower petals. Look at their market, new marketing campaign. I don't think that's orbs. an accident. orbs. The font, everything screams feminine. It, I think, it just does. I think that's I don't their... mean to be mean or you know, get in trouble, but I think you know, I thank them to their I think they missed it for the most part, on the update here. And what I wrote in my piece is iOS 7 fails without a major hardware change. And that is the screens that the the male buyer wants. Bigger and, oh, that's my radar. The large screen phone is what the majority, I think, of the majority of the, the new phone uh, contracts are going to go to. Whether that's Windows Phone, or the Galaxy S4, or the HTC One, or the Note I, Two or Three. <laughs> yeah, those ginormous phones. <laughs> I think they missed the boat. It's. I think iOS Seven is good enough to put on a big screen. If you let me take away some of those pretty colors, um, <laughs> it doesn't give you an option to change any of those effects. I have not been into it okay. enough. I was All able right. to change the desktop, the backdrop. Uh, photos. You can still customize it, you know, color colorfully as much as you want. But you're not going to get rid of some of the icons. You're not going to get rid of the the default look that Apple is making you um, live with. And that's right. you can't delete their icons. And and so. that's that's why I said I said I think they'll limit their bleeding. But I think they're also limiting their ceiling. I think they're saying. We're sticking with the grids. No live. Forget. I don't want to use the word live tiles. Forget anything. No widgets. No any <laughs> Malibu Barbie. Real inf <laughs> Real information in front of there. The they're saying because what's going to happen is all these other phones, whether it's Windows Phone, whether it's Android, and even Android's forked into ninety different directions from HTC, from Samsung. They all have their own versions of this thing anyway. But they're all creating this new cool stuff that even if only a few people want. Even like the Samsung S4, yes, it has 100 different things that not everyone's going to use, but if 1% uses each item, they're going to get themselves in trouble. And by not really adding, they didn't come, there's no wow in this phone at all. Yeah, it, it might, they finally fixed the fact that they changed some of the icons we've seen for six years in your hand, but there's nothing to say, you no, know, this is lipstick on a pig, fellas. That's I, it, exactly. I'm calling it. This, the, you're, I said in my, uh, in my, uh, article iOS 7 fails without new supporting hardware. They're going to get their numbers. They're going to get their numbers mm -hmm. to tout we have this many install base and X amount of our uh, phones are on the brand new uh, iOS 7. They're going to get them from the iPhone 4. They're going to get Four. them from the 4S. They're going to get them from the 5. It's lipstick on a pig unless you make a bigger phone because I was semi happy with this phone. And I wanted something bigger. My contract is up. I have it. A big phone. A big, nice, lovely 928. You're going to lose your market share. It's not going to be a lot, but you're going to bleed them little by little. And this color scheme and all these little 
things that you've done are not going to keep people on your platform unless you bring them something other than a four foot tall iPhone 5. A 5S in the same hardware package is a fail. I'm picking up my keyboard. I'm, I'm just ready to... I, I agree. I, it's a fail. I think that, again, they're taking the safe route where I'm, I'm not saying they need to reinvent their phone because their phone still is, the, especially in the U.S. market, the dominant player as for a single handheld device. But everyone, you don't have to be an economist. You don't have to be a numbers person to watch a trend line. You don't have to see. You have. You could see what's going on. The competition is getting better. As much as we, you know, we can make fun of the uh, BlackBerry, the Z10 or Q10, whatever. The BlackBerry Z10, it might. I don't think it's going to take off. And it, it's still a really nice handset that has some really cool features in it, though. So they've innovated a lot. And even the multitasking on that, which you didn't show off right there, it is right out of Windows Phone, which is right out oh, of. Oh yeah, no, the multitasking is very cumbersome because it's new. So right. Ah. Uh, I will double tap, <laughs> double tap, there and you go. get. Oh, I hit the button again. It, that's what I say. It's very sluggish. Uh, but and yeah, you get the apps. Now, what I like that they did is they put uh, they put the app icon, the identifier at the bottom. Sometimes you get an app on a screen that you might not know exactly where you where you are in that app. But look at that Amazon Video Player or Amazon Cloud Player. It's not live. It, his little icon is right there down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I think they did well with that. Okay, I that's, think that's the, not, but the things but, that they quote unquote borrowed, which is fine. They did. They they implemented okay. And like I said, I have no. I even wrote this too. I have zero problem with the. You have to give customers what they want. If they're screaming for something that someone else has, you have to give it to them. And I think we're getting to the point now, and it goes for all operating systems. Microsoft, you know, Windows Phone 7 had a lot of WebOS features. Even this has Microsoft Windows Phone and Android features. Android originally, you know, the original, original Android phone was a copy of a BlackBerry. And the interim, an iPhone came out, and then the Android G1 came out, and it looked exactly like an iPhone. So you have to, um, it's just the point, they got to stop yelling everyone's copying because they're all going to get to a point where they're all going to... It's Listen, Windows and Mac have been taking back and forth for how many years from each other on OS X and Windows. So that people shouldn't worry that much. And the whole idea of like people on... And it, it's so annoying, the noise. And you know you really see it with Twitter and Google+, Plus if you're ever on there, during these events. I mean, Apple could have said, we, w we cured cancer, and 50% of the people would have been screaming bloody murder how awful this company is, and they just copied. And <laughs> they just copied Ap Apple could have went up there and said, you know what, we're introducing nothing today, and a percentage of the people would have said that this is the greatest day of my life. Yeah. There's just, I don't understand it's, why people, I just want to use a phone that works for me, for my work, for my personal, I don't understand why people are so caught up, and I think the Nokia Lumia ad we've shown here before, the little fighting ad, <laughs> is the greatest ad of the year, because that just I shows sheep. how, the eye sheep how stupid this whole thing has become. Yeah. We got to roll, fellas. Um, as much fun as this is, we, we definitely have to do this again. I definitely want to get rich on here. Uh, I want to do one app of the week. I did, uh, this is from uh, Kyle, uh, WinFan Kyle. He's, he was on the show early on in Surface Geeks, maybe two or three episodes. Uh, Kyle helped me out, get me rolling. He introduced me to an app called Insider. Insider. This is the coolest app ever. There's a free and a paid, and it gives you, um, you can pin this to your start screen. That's my battery, guys, 100% right there on my battery. I've got quick links to all my, uh, my uh, Wi-Fi. Everything you need is right here, Maps. Uh, it tells you how much storage you have available. You can flip over to today's Bing photograph. You want a widget? This app is one big freaking widget. It is awesome. It is called Insider. Now, there's another app called Windows Phone Insider. It's, that's not it. This is, this is just Insider. Very I guess it cool. gets you inside your phone. I have made a choice on my iPod app for... Um, so, now playing. This is the last, last show I listened to. It was uh, Mr. Rich. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, special. The uh, my iPod app is now 
um, what's it called? It's called I Potter. Let me make the icon bigger. I Podcast. I don't know why these guys called it I Podcast, but I made the uh, the app looks like iTunes. It's they need <laughs> See, to change it's that. a podcast app. <laughs> it's a podcast app. Um, <laughs> they've done a real good job with this. I think that they've got some potential. That is my my app of choice for podcasting now. Uh, in a in a very very close second is CarbonCast. Uh, I still have a couple of issues with CarbonCast. I'm trying to work out, but for now I'm using this other one, and I'm happy. I'm back to listening to shows. I'm not suffering like I was when I was uh, angry uh, at these podcast apps. That's it. I, Surface I, Geeks 29. I'm just going to give one quick tip, really quick. Okay, give anyone, it to me. If anyone you know is looking for a phone and doesn't like spending a lot of money on a phone, I held for the first time this week the Nokia 521. I went to the store just to, which is the What'd T-Mobile. Un, it, unbelievable. Yeah, it's smaller than our 920, obviously. It's a smaller version of that right. phone. Carrier? It's T-Mobile for 100 bucks off contract. So 100 bucks, and you've got a phone. Is it going to cost you any money for... If you're on T-Mobile. If you're on yeah, if you want to suffer through T-Mob. Right. Well, I guess... I don't know. I guess some bands would cross over to AT&T, but uh, I don't think you'd get the 4G or LTE. But it would work. Um, would be, well, can you just put on minutes? They do do... Pre, I think they do do prepay plans. Okay. But um, there's no contract, so... For so you could just buy it and have it for a Wi-Fi device if you wanted to. If or you wanted they to. they make you No, I think... A, well, I don't know. I, don't, I think you could just pick up the phone. If they sell it at the Microsoft store. I'm pretty sure you can just buy the box. That'd be kind of cool. You're right. It's like a little Zune. There's <laughs> <laughs> my Zune. <laughs> the Zune phone, whatever they are. Zune is back. Um, it was really, really just... For a hundred... You see what they're selling for a hundred bucks on contract. And right. then you see... It's really impressive. So if anyone, you know, either... Doesn't want to enter a contract, you know. Travels a lot because let's forget, you know, T-Mobile is a GSM phone. You could tr- stick SIMs in it from around the world as you travel. That's one thing they're great for. Uh, you know, buy a SIM every time you go to a new airport and around the world. Uh, this phone's great. Go pick it up. Go check it out at the Microsoft Store, T-Mobile Store. But uh, yeah, hey, and you definitely want to register for the meetup. We've got uh, 32 out of 90. There's seats left. The giveaway list is growing and growing and growing. I've got a Drobo. Boxy box, a Roku, some silicon dusts, uh, HD home runs, uh, another NAS machine, um, some Seton stuff. It's awesome. So the um, the giveaway list is growing, and uh, you definitely want to be at that meetup to be able to win some of that. All these links and notes will be in the show notes. Once again, I am your host, David McCabe. Find me at Surface Geeks on Twitter. Mr. Richard Hay is available at WinOBS on Twitter. Richard, thank you very much. No problem, guys. Nice to be with you all. And uh, just want to put out there as well as WindowsObserver.com, the Observe Tech podcast is out there for you guys to listen to. We are just seven episodes away from number 100. All right. I'm pretty excited Definitely, about guys, that. If you're counting if you're that down every week, show, you must listen to the win, uh, Windows Observer. Dot com. Go out there, get your RSS links for his podcast, for Rich's podcast. You will not regret it. Uh, Darren is at Fins Up DNC on Twitter. Darren, have, that is uh, that is it. I have nothing else to add. I'm all out of, <laughs> all out of bed. We're just just Air. riled up and ready to go. Join me next for Home Server Show. If you're standing here watching live, otherwise uh, we're going to take a week off. We're not going to be here at all next week. I hope nothing major happens, guys. Uh, I'll be I'll be tweeting you from the beach. I'll be in South Carolina. Anybody in South Carolina wants to have a beach up? That's a Just beach a couple states up, away from me. I'm game. I'm game. But otherwise, I'm on vacation. That's been number twenty nine. We'll see you here in two weeks. Goodbye. <laughs>